Welcome to our first tutorial. Um, in this tutorial, we will be learning how to create motion tweens as well as creating different objects moving across the screen. So the first thing that we are going to do is I want you to select under Create New Action Script 3.0. So we're going to click on that. That is going to give you a new untitled document and we are going to save this as tween since we are creating a motion tween um, and you can save that wherever you think is desirable so tween and you should see that the data type there is FLA and we want to keep that because this is a flash document the first thing that we are going to do is we're going to fit our screen to window. So when we do fit to window, you can see that now the entire stage um, appears on our screen, the biggest that it can get at one time, again, viewing the entire stage. Then we're going to grab our oval tool. Now that can be found in your toolbar over here. And you click and hold down the rectangular tool. And when you click and hold it down, it gives you more options and you can select the oval tool. Then you'll see at the bottom of that toolbar you have pencil stroke, which is the outline of the symbol or of the object. And then you have the fill color, which would be the inside. And so we're going to use red for the fill, which is the paint bucket. And we're going to choose black for the stroke or the outline. You want to make sure that this object a selecting option is deselected. When this is selected, it creates it as one object rather than pieces, and I'll explain that a little bit further later. But what I'm going to do in order to create a perfect circle is I'm going to hold Shift, and I am going to click and drag out that circle, and again, Shift will allow you to create a perfect circle. And then I'm going to grab the selection tool from my toolbar, and I'm going to draw a rectangular marquee around the circle and that's just using your mouse to create a rectangle. You can see now that it's selected and this is where you see that it's in pieces. Because the image appears in dots, we know that this image is broken, meaning that it can be manipulated in any way. The next thing that we want to do is we want to convert this to a symbol because we want to create a motion and whenever you create a motion you have to use symbols. And in order to convert to symbol you hit the F8 key and you'll see this box pop open and we can name it red circle. Now the type is depending on how you're, you're going to use it. I'm going to leave it as a movie clip because we are creating a motion out of this and I'm going to say okay. I now know it's a symbol because this blue box appears around the circle, indicating that this is now one piece it is together. Now in order to create a motion tween, the first thing that we do is we go to the insert menu. On the insert menu, you will find motion tween. Click on motion tween. The first thing that you'll notice is down on your timeline that it is automatically put in 24 frames for you here. So it's already um, creating that motion on a default of 24 frames. And when we click and drag this object to the right side of the stage, you can see it's creating that green line there. And when I let it go, that's telling me that that's the path that my circle is going to follow. So when I hit enter, it's going to have my circle move from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen. Now in the timeline you'll now see that on frame one it has a black circle. This indicates that this is a key frame. A key frame should be placed at the beginning and end of the motion. Now you can also see that there's almost a diamond looking icon that appears on frame 24 and that represents the end key frame. Now if you wanted the end keyframe to be on let's say frame 48, you can notice right now that my cursor is uh, two arrows that are going to the right and the left. And if I click and drag that out to 48, it's going to extend this motion and now that end keyframe is on 48. Now again, you've heard me use the term keyframe. Keyframes go at the beginning and the end of the motion. 
And when we add that motion tween in, it creates the motion in between, saving us a whole lot of time and effort. So now you've created a simple, basic motion. Now, the next thing that you might want to do is you might want to change the path. So what I'm going to do is, is with my selection tool, and you should still have that from before, I am going to put my mouse almost on the bottom of that green line. You're not fully on top, you're on the bottom. And when you get to the bottom of it, you see I have a curved arc underneath my arrow. And if I click and pull, you can see it's pulling that green line. And now it's changing the path that this circle is following. And so if I click enter, now you can see that my circle is following the green path and almost going down and up, making a curve motion. Now another option that you can do is you can add color effects. So if we click on frame one of our motion, and then we click on the circle, you'll notice in your properties panel on the right, first you have position and size, so you can change those things here. But notice there's an option called color effect. And if I click on this arrow, it says Style None. And I can choose one of these color effects, such as brightness. And then I can drag the slider to change the color. So I'm going to change this to 70%, making it 70% brighter. And then when I hit Enter to play, and you're probably going to need to click on frame 1 before you can do that, you're going to notice that now the brightness of the overall motion has decreased and now it is 70 percent. Now if you were to click on frame one and again click on the circle, notice I had talked about the position and size earlier. Here you can see the width, and when I put my mouse over it, it gives me that double-headed arrow. And I can click and drag out, and notice how it's changing the width of my circle. I can also do that with the height. And the x-coordinate. And the y-coordinate. So now I've, complete, I've created a completely different motion and a completely different sized object. Now when you are changing the width and the height, please make sure that you understand that we are changing the dimensions of the box that surrounds the circle. It's not just the circle itself. Now the next thing that you might want to look at is some other options under color effect, such as alpha. And if you click on alpha, you can see how alpha changes the transparency, it almost becomes transparent. As you can see, when we put it on zero, it does. And so now, as you watch, you can see that our circle is actually becoming more transparent as it moves. And so that's another option that we can add um, to our circle. Another thing that you might want to do is you might want to add a filter. So again, um, we're going to click on frame one, and we're going to click on the circle. And over in the properties panel, you'll see filters. And when you click the drop down arrow for filters, you see properties and you see values. Now, what you want to do is, is if you want to come to the bottom here, and you're going to see add a new filter, and it almost looks like your new layer button. And that can be found in Photoshop and Flash. So that almost looks like your new layer button. And when you click on that, you're going to see different filters that you can add, such as a drop shadow. And then it gives you the different things that you can change. Changing the strength, changing the blur. Again, it gives you the arrows. You no longer have to um, use a slider here. Your arrow or your mouse is your slider, which is very cool. Um, you can give it a knockout, an inner shadow. You can hide the object, whatever you may want to do. And then if you wanted to change the shadow color, you could. Now when you want to delete a filter, you'll notice down here we have a trash can, and we can click the trash can to delete that filter. And then we can go back to add filter, and we could choose bevel. 
and you could add that bevel effect making it almost look more 3D and you can change the blur there as you can see how it's changing the blur inside of the circle again changing the blur the strength the shadow the highlight the angle the distance and then again you can knock it out so you have different options here and again um, that is just by clicking on the new uh, filter uh, excuse me add filter button at the bottom there the next really really cool feature that we have in flash is called motion presets and motion presets are amazing it allows us oh excuse me I hit the wrong key here it allows us to create a motion um, basically with the click of a button so if you come up to the window menu and you scroll through you're gonna see something called motion presets and if you click on that option for some reason it went away so let me go back in and click on that one more time motion presets there we go you're gonna get this box right here and if you click the drop down arrow for default presets you're gonna see all the options here such as bounce in 3d and it's even giving you a preview right here and so you can see that you can have a ball bounce bounce and smush which is a really difficult effect um, so let's say that's something that you want to apply so you can click apply now it says in order to apply the preset you will need to select the object on stage so I need to click on the object I did not have it selected um, so then I go back to motion preset I click apply and it's gonna say do you want to replace the current motion because yes you are going to be replacing the current motion but we are gonna say yes now you can see where it has keyframes down here at the bottom and when we hit enter and oh so unfortunate because I have the ball starting off so low we actually can't see the bounce so I'm actually gonna drag that ball up and you can still see it's coming off the page a little bit um, so I'm going to need to fix that and the way that we can do that is if we zoom out you should be able to see the bottom and then just bring that there to the end of the stage now fit it in window hit enter and now you can see that effect that it's getting and you really want to even pull this down a tad bit more because you want it to hit the ground and you can see how it's bouncing it's hitting the ground and bouncing and smushing back so that is one of our preset options and that's going to be it for now so that is motion tweening um, as well as your motion presets and a couple of other features i hope that you enjoyed it and i will see you next time